Hello, continuing our work with logarithms, we're going to look at the graphs of logs and a little bit at the graphs of exponentials. Uh, and I'm going to warn you right now, the brightness of this video is going to change significantly at uh, several points. So we have the dark screen that we're used to now, and I'm going to switch to a program called GeoGebra because I want you to see exactly what the graphs are going to do. Usually, I'll be focused on sketching because it's important for you to be able to sketch confidently and competently for your skills in the exam. But for today, there are a lot of graphs and it's important that you see accurately what uh, way they change. So I'm going to be using a graphing program and you can use it too in order to check and understand what it is uh, we're doing in this topic. So I'm going to start off by looking at the graph of y is equal to log to the base 2 of x. And before I do that, I'm going to remind myself of some of the outcomes I expect to get. So y uh, is equal to log to the base 2 of 1. Well, log to the base 2 of 1. What power of 2 would give me 1? Well, I know that that is going to be 0. So when x is 1, I'm expecting y to be 0, because 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Now, what would be my y output here? I have log to the base 2 of 2, so 2 to the power of 1. So what power of 2 is 2 to the power of 1? It's going to be 1. So when x is 2, I'm expecting y to be 1. And following along with this uh, logic, when uh, x is 4, I'm expecting y to end up being 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so it would be 2. So when x is 4, I'm expecting y to be 2. This is just a bit of a refresher on how our logs are going to work. And I'm going to note right now before I show it to you, that the y-axis is going to be an asymptote, a vertical asymptote for uh, logs and any non-complicated logs or anything that looks basically like this with a, with a different base number here or with any base number here uh, is going to have the y-axis as an asymptote. We're going to see that we can actually shift the log function around a little bit, but a simple, any simple log function like this will have the y-axis as an asymptote. And we're going to see its general shape now. So the brightness of the screen is going to change significantly in a moment. So I have y is equal to log to the base 2 of x graphed here. And if I think back on what I uh, just checked on, I know that if when x is uh, 0, when x is, sorry, when x is one oh. uh, when x is one y is zero when x is uh, two we have two to the power of what is two it's going to be two to the power of one so when x is two uh, y is one and when x is four uh, y is what power of two is four it's going to be uh, two to the power of two so you can see these points work sensibly. And we can see that the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. So this function gets closer and closer to the y-axis and goes down to negative infinity, but it never actually touches the y-axis. So I can see its general shape like this. This is the only type of function that looks exactly like this. So oh, we can uh, recognize a logarithmic function in this way, the same way as we would recognize an exponential function as being our ever-increasing one going up this way. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is modify this a little bit and uh, see what effect it's going to have. And I'm going to jump back to my other screen now before I graph this. So I'm going to look at y is uh, equal to log to the base 2 of 2x. And I want to use my log rules on page 21 to predict what this is going to do. So I have uh, log to the base 2 of 2x. 
I have two things multiplied together in my brackets here. That means that I could be adding logs. If I'm multiplying my original numbers, it means that I would be adding my powers. Uh, so I would have log to the base 2 of 2 plus log to the base 2 of x, the function that I've been dealing with up here. What is log to the base 2 of 2? It's just 1. So I have 1 plus log to the base 2 of x. So that's what y is equal to. Well, what result do we expect that to have? I'm adding 1 to every single output of my original function. So I'm going to expect that my all of my y values are going to get bigger by 1. My whole graph, my whole function graph is going to shift upwards by 1, is my prediction. Likewise, if we have a look at our y is equal to uh, log to the base 2 of 2 uh, of x all over 2, I should say. I can use my rules of logs to say that I'm dividing these, so it's going to be subtracting logs. The number underneath my line is going to be what I'm subtracting, because effectively it is multiplied with a negative power of 1, if you want to think about it that way. So log to the base 2 of 2 is going to be e1. And I have a minus, so that's going to be y is equal to log to the base 2 of x minus 1. Uh, and finally, so these worked out nicely as plus and minus 1. The last one I want to point out is you don't have to get a nice one like this where it's uh, going to work out to a, a simple number. You could just as easily get something like this, where we would break it up into log to the base 2, 3 plus log to the base 2 of x. Uh, and when we put this into our calculator, because it doesn't work out as anything particularly nice, we get something very roughly. So this is just an approximation from the point of view of seeing what our graph is going to do. We get uh, approximately 1.58. And to put that into our calculator again is our log button with the novel base is what it's called. It's this button on our calculator here. So we it would type that button and then we would press two and then right arrow and then three and then equals and we would get 1.58 uh, plus log to the base two of x. So this is again the function that we've been already looking at on our graph. So again our uh, picture is going to get brighter again. And now we're going to implement those things. So let's try our uh, first one here. Uh, we have a log to the base 2 of x, and now we're going to get 2x. And we can see here our prediction was that we were going to add 1 to all of our y values, because this broke up into log to the base 2 of 2 plus log to the base 2 of x. So it ended up being 1 plus log to the base 2 of x. Uh, and you can see very clearly that all of our, all of our numbers have simply uh, been shifted up by 1. So you can see we've gone from being 0 here up to y being 1. We've gone from 2 here, sorry, from 1 here up to 2. We've gone from um, 2 here up to 3 and so on. So all we have done is add 1 to all of our values. Uh, so that was the effect of multiplying by 2. Let's try dividing by 2 now. And see what we end up with. And likewise, we have ended up subtracting 1 as we were expecting, as we worked out in our uh, copies or on the other screen. Uh, and if we now take a situation where we multiply by something that isn't quite so nice, so it was multiplied by 3x, uh, and we can see that we are adding on a particular number, it's about 1.58. So you can see that at, we are adding on this consistent amount each time of about 1.58.
So that is the effect of uh, that type of change to the logs. That's not the only change that we can make, however. Uh, we can also, if we go back to our original graph like this, we could also do x plus 1. What do we expect x plus 1 to do for us? Well, that means that if, when x is 0, so we'd be down at negative infinity normally, when x is 0, the number inside the brackets would be 1. So it would be like this part of our graph. It would be effectively shifting our graph over to the left because x is going to rise at uh, the x number the number in the bracket is going to rise one faster than it would have originally so let's see if this works out the way we expect and it does so when x is zero it's like x is one because we are adding on an extra one what would happen then if we subtracted one instead of adding it The opposite happens. When x is 1, or sorry, when x is 2, we're subtracting. Uh, when our x variable is 1, uh, it's like we are uh, subtracting uh, it. It's like we are uh, moving it uh, to gray, to rise slower. So when x is 1, it's like our input in our brackets is 0. So it's uh, now we have the asymptote going at x is equal to 1. So that is our way of moving around our logs. And the last thing I want to point out to you, uh, we have technically already done, but to write it in a different way, we could add 1 to our function which effectively does the same thing as uh, having our 2x in our bracket here. We've simply added 1 to all of our y outputs. So that is the effect of adding on a constant like that. So that's our logs. Now quickly you'd have a look at uh, how that relates to exponentials. If I activate this here, I can see that is y is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now what might immediately jump out to people is they look like they're mirroring each other. And we would be right. They are mirrored in the line y equals x. So this is the line y equals x. This is the function 2 to the power of x. This is log to the base 2 of x. Now if we have functions that follow this pattern, what does it mean? It means that we have uh, inverse functions. This is what it looks like when you have the graph of inverse functions. And we already know that 2 to the power of x and log to the base 2 of x are inverse functions. We've talked about it, we've used it before. So this is uh, the graphical representation of that. And we could be asked to sketch that. If we were given the uh, log to the base 2 function, we could be asked to sketch the uh, 2 to the power of x function based upon it, knowing that it is going to mirror in the xy uh, line, or y equals x line. Now, if we step back from logs for just a moment and do a very quick look at our 2 to the power of x, if we had uh, 2 to the power of uh, x, we could do something like 2 to the power of x plus 1. What is that going to do? It's just going to rise our function up by 1 for all of our y values, as we would expect. And it could we could also add 1 to the power. And what is that going to do? It's effectively going to multiply by 2. Because if I go back to my original screen, that is going to be the same as 2 dot 2 to the power of x. So that is our graphs of our logs and exponentials.